is for managing imposter syndrome. So what I'm about to share today is strategies and tactics that we have seen that work really, really well on our Org Season platform. It's a one-stop shop um, for all your employee well-being needs. And it's normally our go-to platform when we want to get access to insights uh, about employee engagement experience and behavior. Uh, during our today uh, webinar, we will talk about how to help our employees and ourselves to be more authentic, empowered, and uh, confident. So, but before we get started, uh, I would love to set an intention for our today webinar. So my intention for today is to share with you actionable, easy to follow, practical, day-to-day -to -day tools, techniques, and practices that can make your life easier. So uh, I'm going to quickly dive in uh, because I really want to be respective of your time. I highly recommend you to take notes, minimize all the distractions around you, and just uh, give permission to yourself to spend some quality time with yourself, by yourself fully, while learning how to prioritize your mental health and well-being. So, um, the next thing I want to say is, uh, I just want to share a presentation with you. And I want to say that many of you might be wondering, what is, who is this webinar for? Well, this presentation is for professional women who are feeling trapped between their career and their private life. This type of uh, person might be successful, but this is not how they feel. And it is also, our today webinar is also for HRs who want to help their employees who struggle, struggle with chronic anxiety, stress, uh, panic productivity, and uh, uh, burnout. And all those things, how those things actually are associated with imposter syndrome. But first of all, let me actually introduce myself so you know who I am. I'm Alexandra Kafka, the founder of Arbat Yoga Lab and Oxygen, a former PR executive and a corporate well-being expert. I'm a very not a survivor. I experienced burnout uh, six years ago while I was at work, and this was the most challenging experience in my life. This experience caused my career. And if you honestly ask me, back then I thought I was doing something wrong. I felt I wasn't good enough. I thought that I didn't deserve uh, this career. And as a result, I decided to live a simple life the very first few years as a yoga teacher. And let me tell you that this cost me a ton of money, but most importantly, it cost me emotionally and mentally. For the next couple of years, I have traveled to 43 countries around the world to uh, have sustainable high performance by evidence-based well-being practices. So when I came back to London two years later, what I decided to do was to give access to the right tools um, and give employees the uh, opportunity to actually prioritize their mental health, navigate um, you know, their demanding careers, they also learn how they can actually bring their best selves to work. So our programs have been delivered uh, since 2020, since we launched the Art of Yoga Lab to more than 55 big corporates in six markets and hundreds of employees all over the world. And thanks to the great success we had with our corporate well-being programs, we decided to digitize our services via our employee well-being platform, which is called Oxygen. In the next 60 minutes, you are going to learn my exact strategy on how to overcome imposter syndrome and how to help your employees overcome it. So, can you guess who are the people that you think are most vulnerable to experiencing imposter syndrome? Who are those people who are at the greatest risk? 
And this is a good question because normally when I ask you this question, many people say that um, that it is those who actually work in the corporate world in very ambitious careers, or it is um, these people who actually just started a very challenging career and they are just in their first year. Or some others, they say that uh, those people are senior leaders, really established and well-known um, as, uh, as amazing experts in their own industries. And it's interesting because the statistics show that uh, women who actually suffer from imposter syndrome at work, 53%, uh, they are currently experiencing the syndrome. 85 percent of them, they have not spoken to anyone at work about their struggles. 70% of all people have felt like an imposter at some point in their lives. So seven out of 10 in this virtual room, we will experience the imposter syndrome at some point in our lives. And less than 5% of employers actually address imposter syndrome with their staff. But as I said before, Many of us, we think that people who work in the corporate world are those who are really affected. The reality is different. We see many celebrities and uh, famous actors like J-Lo, Natalie Portman, Tom Hanks. All of those guys have said that they struggle with imposter syndrome. But also famous athletes like Serena Williams scientists like Albert Einstein, and even, even after publishing eight books and receiving several awards, Maya Angelou was still feeling not good enough. She said, I run a game on everybody and they are going to find me out. How many of you do you actually relate to this, um, to this syndrome? And how many of you can you relate to what Tom Hans said? That sometimes he feels like a fraud. So I want to share with you some of our best practices. And um, those practices actually represent some uh, successful uh, programs that we have launched before with very big organizations like Soho House, Wells Fargo, Royal Bank of Canada, and can be really helpful when it comes to your real personal life or when it comes to your um, employees' lives. So the very first practice is about awareness. And creating awareness is the hardest part, to be honest. Back then, when I experienced imposter syndrome myself, it was the first time I've ever, ever heard these words, imposter syndrome. I was like, what is that supposed to mean? And trust me, many of you, many of your employers do not actually know what is this syndrome all about. So what are the signs of imposter syndrome? So imposter syndrome involves feelings of self-doubt, low self-esteem and personal incompetence. And regardless how much you achieve, you always feel like not good enough. Now, how do we know if we personally or our employees suffer from imposter syndrome? Well, the great thing um, about awareness is that we can actually, if we want to be more aware, we can take a self-test and we share some great self-tests with our clients. So we highly recommend you, you take the self-test and you, you see for yourself, right? And this is how you will be able to tell whether you actually are at risk or not. And there is the imposter syndrome cycle. And many of my clients ask, Alexandra, what is this syndrome cycle all about? I'm going to give you an example. First phase of the imposter syndrome cycle is that you being assigned a project or a task. And once you, you did, the anxiety takes over. So you might either procrastinate 
other over plan because you want to uh, make sure that you actually uh, did everything you could to uh, to submit this project successfully, right? Phase number three is that you actually submit the project and you get to hear some amazing feedback. And you get this brief sense of relief. You feel like you did enough. But then immediately you start to rationalize about it. And then they're like trying to talk yourself out of you actually succeeding in delivering this project. So what you normally say to yourself is like, oh, thanks God, nobody realized that the quality was so bad. Oh, thanks God, nobody actually saw and was like, so that I wasn't, as talented, as skilled, as good as they originally thought I am. And sooner or later, they will, they will find out, they will realize. Phase number four is when we start then uh, getting anxious and stressed, the sooner or later, uh, you know, will be uh, found, find, found out, will be found out that we are a fraud. And then, the last phase is when the, the, the cycle continues to look over and over again. And you might find yourself really kind of trapped here, right? So it's very, very important to be able to identify the different phases. And in many cases, when my clients ask me like, you know, like how, how do I know if I don't take this test? How do I know if I, uh, experienced imposter syndrome, I ask them, do you agonize over even the smallest mistakes or flaws in your work? Do you attribute your success to luck or outside factors? Are you overworked? You have the tendency to undermine your achievements. You experience a constant fear of failure and that ultimately affects every single aspect of your life. Are you experiencing lack of well-being in areas of your life, like sleep, eating habits, lack of physical exercise, only because you feel like you need to work harder and longer hours to prove yourself? Are you tired of the constant pressure, lack of work-life balance, toxic productivity, yet you are concerned that if you're not keep up the pace, you will damage your reputation and it will cost you your career? Look, if any of those things uh, applies to you, I have some really good news. None of this is the real problem. The real problem is that you need to make some shifts. And when I talk about raising awareness, it's really important to be able to take a self-test, very important to identify and know about those five phases of imposter cycle, and then it's important to do this early imposter syndrome diagnosis before it escalates. Because let me tell you that when it escalates, it's already too late. You already are uh, experiencing burnout. And trust me, you don't want this. Of course, you want to evolve and grow and succeed, but you don't want the burnout. So the next best practice is about going a little bit deeper, going one step further. And as soon as you take the self test and you're able to tell whether you're at risk or, or not, it's really important to be able to tell what's your type of imposter syndrome. And according to a scientist who is called Valerie Young, there are five different types. Uh, but before I go into the types, I want to share a little bit about what is the uh, archetype if, if, if you wish, uh, when it comes to imposter syndrome. So that type of person typically is a high achiever, is a person who is able to identify the problems before um, they even happen, or is able to uh, come up with solutions before ever anyone else does, is the type of person who saves the day, who goes above and beyond, who loves their work, and because they have high tolerance 
to pain, you can drag them, them themselves far beyond the breaking point of a normal person. So the high achiever persona has a dark side. Early in their um, childhood or early in their career, they experienced something traumatic and they started having some set of beliefs that actually ended up being a self-sabotaging. Some kind of beliefs like, I have to prove myself. I am known for getting it done. Hard work deserves success. So let me share with you some of the, the five actually types of imposter syndrome. Very first type is the perfectionist. Is this type of person who actually is great in delivering an exceptional experiencing experience is about submitting a, a fantastic product, uh, creating an early win. The type of person cannot tolerate mistakes and their standards are extremely high. For them, failure equals shame. And the, their secret to success, their coping mechanism is always overplan, over prepare, and over analyze. So, some of the, the signs that you are this type of imposter syndrome, it's if you hold yourself and others to extremely high standards. Are you sometimes accused of being a micromanager? Even if you deliver a successful project, do you beat yourself up because you are not well prepared enough? And are you the type of person who is never settled for less than perfect? If the answer is yes, then you are perfectionist. The second category is the superwoman. This type of person validates their success based on how many projects, roles, tasks they can do exceptionally well simultaneously. The superwoman wants to be good at everything. They feel like it's in their nature to be good at everything. Um, and when they are not able to excel at a certain role, they feel uh, ashamed. So in their mind, they should be able to respond to the requirement of every different role. And if they don't, they feel like they're not good enough. So are you one of those uh, people? Do you juggle multiple tasks at once? Do you often find yourself working over time, even during the weekends? Do you neglect your basic well-being needs in order to work more? If the answer is yes, then you are uh, the superwoman uh, archetype. The next uh, type is the natural genius. For this type, it's not just about achieving something great. It's about achieving it with speed and ease. Uh, and when this doesn't happen, for them, it's a sign of failure. The natural genius imposter syndrome is someone who might have done great accomplishment in school. They might have uh, had an early career success. And they feel like it's natural for them to succeed. So when they don't, they feel like a failure. So. Some of the symptoms, um, you might be one of those people. Do you believe people are born charismatic, skillful, or talented? Do you oftentimes get frustrated and you may quickly switch from one job, project, hobby to another? Do you see everyone around you as achieving and winning while you are the only one failing? If the answer is yes, then you are a natural genius. The next imposter syndrome type is the soloist. This type of person wants to have everything under control. They love doing things alone, they tend to micromanage, and it's really hard for them to share responsibility. So this, this is the type of person who loves working autonomously, independently, isolated from the rest of the group. They feel like they need to figure out everything on their own. And that's why asking for help or accepting help for them is something that makes them feel shameful. Some of the symptoms, and you might ask yourself if you are this type, by asking yourself, do you feel like you always need more time for preparation, planning, or rehearsal? 
Do you prefer solo projects versus group tasks? You don't ask for help even when you need it? The last step is the expert. This is the type of personality who wants to know everything, and this is why they're in a constant process of learning and developing. However, it is impossible to learn everything, right? I mean, even in one single field. And because there will be moments that they do not know everything, they feel like a failure. Um, so it's, 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 for them, it's all about uh, being the expert in the field, and this is why they try really hard to make this happen. Um, and the coping mechanism is that they're constantly doing just another course, just another qualification. Some of the symptoms you might want to ask yourself, do you over-prepare fully by doing relentless research, diving into courses, watching tutorials? Do you avoid applying for new career opportunities because you feel like you don't meet all the qualifications? Even if you've been teaching or working in one specific field for years, do you still feel like you have this fear of being discovered? If the answer is yes, this sounds like you, then you are a soloist. Now, why did I show all those facts? Because this is really, really important. It's really important to be able to say whether we uh, tick certain boxes, because if we are able to do that, then we will be able to identify our behavioral patterns. Where we'll be better able to understand what are the things that we actually do on all the parallel. So the next practice that I want to share with you is unplugging, is disconnecting in three different levels, emotional level, on a mental level, on a physical level. I'm going to explain a little bit more about what do I mean by that. Um, so first of all, I want you to keep in mind that when we talk about imposter syndrome, there are three main key triggers. Your thoughts, as uh, you know, like the, the, the thoughts you, you tend to have, like, some kind of background noise, uh, which are all about self-limiting thoughts and beliefs. The second is the environment. Uh, it's about how much close you uh, are into your working environment and how good you are in setting boundaries. And the last part is not asking for help. This is another trigger uh, when we do need help and we do not ask for help that can trigger uh, further our imposter syndrome. So how can we actually make sure that we do things right when it comes to those three categories? The, the first is about our thoughts and our mental well-being. So what I highly recommend my clients to do is when they come back from work, when they, they finish work, working from home, right? It's really important to set a specific time of the day where they discuss about work. And then after a certain time to just know and keep themselves accountable to not be talking about work because then we tend to, to become obsessed and we tend to be talking and thinking, and again, talking and thinking about work, which actually doesn't help us to disconnect on, on, a, on a mental level. So what I recommend is keep your uh, partner, let your partner to keep you accountable. Let your partner to actually uh, share with you, you know, how was their day? Um, you share with them, how was your day? And, from seven to eight, for example, right? And after this time, you just give a promise to yourself to spend some quality time with your family. And this is so important. The next is your environment. It's really important to uh, no longer work uh, out of office hours. It's important to block your calendar. Schedule blocking is not just about saying that, okay, after six o'clock, I want, I will stop working. It's about blocking it on your calendar. And it's about uh, using some time management tools so you can actually create free time and uh, quality free time after work. Now, why, what I see most of my clients doing is they, okay, they're good in creating this kind of extra time, but as soon as they do, 
because they do not effectively use their time, and they end up binge watching, scrolling through their social media. And as a result, they feel worse than before. This is why it's so important to build things that are invigorating, that are things that kind of help you to feel revitalized, re-energized, things that are invigorating and fun. So ask yourself, what are the things that can actually make you feel recharged? And then schedule those on your calendar. Then the last thing is about not asking for help and our emotional well-being. So my question here is, it is really important to be always aware that you need to ask for help. So it might be a therapist, a CBT expert, might be a mindset coach. This person that you go every week and you discuss your worries and your, and your thoughts, the things that make you feel uh, stressed and anxious. And trust me, by doing this, by just having someone actively listening to you, you can actually um, identify your stress triggers and be able to see your toxic habits and all the things that you do to sabotage yourselves or what are the things that actually make you feel like you're not good enough, right? So it's so important. Um, the next uh, practice I want to share with you is the power of psychological safety. So it's, um, I don't want to talk about pluralistic ignorance. So for those of you who don't know what uh, is pluralistic ignorance is when we all, and we all do it, trust me, uh, doubt ourselves privately. And we feel we are alone simply because no one else voices their concerns openly. Okay, so this is why it's so important to be part of a community where everybody shares and they are okay to be vulnerable because they do understand that being vulnerable it can be empowering and inspiring to ourselves and other people around us. So it's important to build an environment of psychological safety. It's important to find a safe space where we can actually feel a sense of belonging. And Jung said that the more people who look or sound like us, the more confident we feel. So what I recommend my um, clients and employees to do is to find this circle of people who share and for them to hear others experiencing similar struggles like themselves. And that it is so empowering. And I'm telling you on a personal level, this was my game changer. So this is something I highly, highly recommend. Okay. So the next thing I want to share with you is if you are an HR, you can actually introduce those circles within your business. So it's a safe space you create where members of the circle are expected to practice deep listening, not trying to give an advice, just genuinely listening closely to each other. And in our yoga lab, we offer this survey. So we have our own facilitators and we run women's uh, circles. And we have found those are very, very powerful. The last practice I want to share with you is uh, the CBT therapy. And when it comes to CBT therapy, there are some tools that you don't need to do therapy to access. One of those tools, it is called EFT tapping. EFT tapping is focused on acupressure, which science reveals soothes the amygdala part of the brain. So keep in mind that well, no, when we experience imposter syndrome, it's because of some self-limiting thoughts and beliefs that have been ingrained, like that have been imprinted in our subconscious level when we were very little and our, during our childhood. And because they're on a subconscious level, it's so hard. We have so limited control in this part of our brain. So this is why we cannot change. Um, but by accessing tools like EFT tapping, we can actually reset our emotions and require our brain. And EFT tapping is so helpful when it comes to anxiety, pain, and depression. So I highly recommend it. As I said before, you don't need a therapist to practice this tool. Uh, you can uh, find amazing practitioners on YouTube who actually show how you can practice it. And trust me, it doesn't take more than 
three to four minutes that you can practice anytime, anywhere. That's the beauty of it. The next thing I want to share with you is the, a book, a book which is called ACT and is based on acceptance and commitment therapy. Again, you don't need to go in therapy to uh, get the benefits of this book. By just reading it, you can access practical uh, exercises that can actually be a game changer. Uh, and I'm telling you because I, 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 this book was like a, a game changer for me back then when I was suffering from imposter syndrome. So it is called ACT and the writer is Ross Harris and I highly, highly recommend it. So I want to share a little bit with you uh, what actually uh, is the driver of all those best practices that I'm sharing with you today. And this is Oxygen, as our employee well-being platform that I shared with you uh, about earlier. But now I want to share with you a uh, one-minute trailer so you can see what and how this platform can actually help you and your employees manage and overcome imposter syndrome. To Oxygen, the one-stop shop for SMEs and startups to prioritize their employees' well-being. We use the domination by a membership website to help your employees take care of their well being in just three clicks. With Oxygen, you get instant access to more than 30 live monthly well being activities plus 45 categories delivered by 80 top well being experts. This is an end to end well being program for every day of the year. Our platform is not just cost-effective, synchronous training saving. It set up activation and delivery it will take less than 30 seconds and save your HRs over 20 hours per month. Our interactive calendar includes happy hours, a daily fitness schedule, well-being networking event. Enjoy team bonding activities like cooking, aroma therapy, and solarity. Mix and match your favorite well-being sessions to create your own bespoke well-being menu. So come and join us and let your body and mind to thank you for that great hour. So to summarize, guys, today we talked uh, about imposter syndrome and how to identify the signs of syndrome, the alarming signs. Um, and also we discussed about best practices. Um, so now I want to mention like, uh, just to make a few big announcements. So as you may know, we we'll run one uh, free HR webinar every month. Uh, to support our HR community. And our next HR webinar is on 20th of April and uh, is uh, called Beat Workplace Burnout Strategies to Identify and Overcome It. It's a really hot topic and I, I would really love to see you joining me. Uh, um, and I'm going to talk again from my personal experience, but also from my experience serving more than 55 uh, global brands all over the world to help their employees overcome burnout. Uh, the next big announcement is the Wealthex Summit. We ran uh, a wealth, uh, I, I'm going to be one of the speakers there, and I'm going to be uh, participating in a panel discussion. So the Wealthex Summit is taking place on the 21st of March, and you can actually book your free ticket on their website. The next big announcement is that we organize our next in-person private event at Home Ground on 9th of May. Uh, the last uh, event we did was at Albright last month and it was a huge success. So this time, again, we are going to invite uh, HRs to join us. So if you want to um, uh, uh, just join to see a panel discussion, network with our community, have some drinks and fun, then sign up for our waiting list. And the last thing I want to mention is that you can actually, uh, the last week in March is the uh, DAO, uh, sorry, is the DAO 
Awareness Week. And we do know in Urban Yoga Lab, many of our clients and employees suffer uh, from financial anxiety. So if you actually want to help your employees to uh, manage and overcome this uh, anxiety, I'm happy to share with you via uh, a free consultation call uh, a number of uh, best financial well-being practices that you can share with the rest of your team. And also, I'll share our playbook with you all. So that was all for today. Uh, I just want to say it was so lovely that you actually joined me. Uh, thank you so much for watching and thank you for joining me. Uh, it was such a pleasure and I look forward to see you on our next webinar on the 27th of, uh, sorry, 21st of April. Um, until then, have a lovely, lovely time. Enjoy uh, the rest of your day. Have a lovely rest of the week and see you soon.